Are you tired of me talking about whiskey smokers yet? Because I sure am. All right, so this is gonna be the last video that I do on whiskey smokers, and I figured that I should do an all-encompassing video about this for all those people who are getting in touch with me asking more questions than I originally thought even existed. So I by no means am the first person to ever create a whiskey smoker at all. This is just the design that I put out there back in the fall so that I could take it to a market. I took it to a market, it sold out. So I got a Onefinity Journeyman and I jam packed the bed with these things. I can make 64 at a time at right around three hours. So the rate that I charge for CNC work just to make it simple for everybody is a dollar a minute on the CNC. So if we're talking about $180, for 64 of these whiskey smokers, we'll just go ahead and make that easy and say that it is $3 for each one of these whiskey smokers that the CNC is making. Now, I make these out of white oak. I make them out of FAS, which is the nicest grade out of white oak that you can do, and that costs a lot of money. So in order to fill up that bed, that's normally around $120, so that's about $2 per whiskey smoker and materials that we're putting in. $3, $2, it's $5 for each one of these that I have. Plus there's a few extra things like these little cloth baggies, which I'll get into a little bit later, as well as the stainless steel mesh. And then the finish that I use, which is mineral oil. We'll talk all about finish because I know a lot of people are very opinionated when it comes to taking an open flame to a finish, especially something that you're going to be drinking. I'll get into that. Finish the stainless steel mesh, as well as the baggie. Let's just go ahead and put on another 50 cents. So $5, 50 cents. I'm selling these for $25 a piece. So the oversimplified version of profit on this is a little over $19, we'll just call it $19. So if we're making 64 of them at a time, let's just say that four of them had knots or you couldn't use, uh, for $19 times 60, that is $1,140 of very simplified profit that you can have in your pocket off of around three hours on the CNC and possibly another hour worth of finishing. Now, if you've seen the evolution of these, they started off with a very simplistic design, which honestly I think looks the best out of all of them, but it takes considerably longer to cut out. So I went ahead and put that design to the side and I started using text on them, which people overwhelmingly liked a lot more. So I would round over the edges, both the top and the bottom. I would put on white oak whiskey smoker and that's what I sold out of at the market. That's what I've been selling at a store locally here in town. And that's been kind of the tried and true seller. Lately, uh, this round especially, I am cutting out all the roundovers just to see if people will buy them. Just like I did that market in the fall, I'm gonna be doing a market in this spring and I'm gonna only be bringing three items, the whiskey smoker and then two other ones. Subscribe and I'll have an entire video about that process when I get there. When they come off the CNC, they have four different tabs on them. So I take them over to my belt sander and then I just sand the edges and then sand the very back of it and then I just touch the design a little bit on the very top to make sure that any type of fuzzies are coming off. After the text portion is done on the CNC, I go back with a nylon or even a steel wire brush and that knocks off a ton of the little fuzzies that you get and that's super easy. I wouldn't use a steel wire brush on anything other than like a really hard wood like this white oak because if you use it like on poplar that's going to really show up in the final project. This only takes two bits. I used a 60 degree groovy Jenny bit in order to do all the text and picture portions and then I used a quarter inch down shear bit the downtown Jenny on this to do all the pocketing as well as the profile tool paths. Now if you're looking to get these files I have made an entire file pack of them. There are 16 different designs to cover anything that you might be using. So if you yourself want to be using white oak for this, there is a white oak whiskey smoker. A lot of people have been telling me that they use these for margaritas. So I made a margarita smoker. And then there is the hardwood whiskey smoker, which means that you can use any type of wood that you have at your disposal. And then I've got another one. I think it's just called the whiskey smoker. Um, I don't know. It'll, it'll be up there. So here's my logo that I put on it. So you can take the blank design and put your logo in the very middle of it if that's something you're wanting to do as well or just leaving it blank because the nice part about these is they're highly personalizable you can easily charge an additional five to ten dollars to tell somebody hey I'll customize this for you to put somebody's initials on it, last name, anything like that. It's a very versatile project that doesn't take very much time at all. And normally when somebody sees that $25 price point, they think, oh, that's very easy. At this spring market, I'm gonna be selling them for $25 a piece or three for $60. At a previous uh, pop-up sale, I tried to do buy three, get one free. Only one person took me up on that. But a lot of people are already buying two of them because they're justifying that as a gift for people in their life. 
And if they see that they're buying two and if they just spend an additional $10, they're able to get three. I think that's going to be an easy jump for people. So we'll see in the spring if that actually works out or not. But that's kind of my thought process going into it. Originally, I was selling these for $20 a piece. And I've seen no difference in people when I hiked it up to $25 a piece. Uh, obviously, that is a lot more profit in your pocket at the end of the day. And it's not that big of a deal when people are looking at impulse purchases, which are between $20 to $40. Once they come off the CNC, we've sanded them I take them over to the finishing station yes I dunk these in mineral oil this is just regular old mineral oil and there are a lot of different thoughts on this you do not have to finish your whiskey smokers at all you can call them done when they're done and sell them as is because a lot of people would prefer that they don't want any other foreign taste when it concerns actually smoking your whiskey a lot of people out there the overwhelming majority of people out there do not think you should smoke your whiskey at all. I'm not a whiskey drinker. I don't care. I want to make a product that people buy. People buy this product. Mineral oil is what is used in fog machines. So at concerts, when they're flooding the entire crowd with fog, that is mineral oil fog. I would not use any other finish on this other than mineral oil. So once we've got it finished, I take them over to the drying station. I made this station that this is in a past video if you'd like to check it out, but it is purely meant for my oil project so that I can put them in a very small space. I'm not having to spread them out over the shop. I turn on a fan, I leave it. Uh, one thing that I have noticed is after 24 hours, they have soaked up a ton of the oil. It's done a lot of the work, but you still have to wipe things off a little bit with a towel. I haven't left a very large batch in there for more than 24 hours, so I'll update that as it comes, but it mainly is a space saving technique. So these in particular, I just wiped these off with a paper towel and then took my compressor and blew off any excess oil, wiped them down again. They were good to go. Uh, mineral oil is a great thing where you can finish something in the morning, you can go through that process and you can sell it that afternoon and things are perfectly fine. After they're finished, after they're dried off, I simply put in a little stainless steel mesh. So these stainless steel meshes, uh, you just put those directly into the little pocket meant for the mesh and it'll friction fit in there. For my little demo one that I use, I've used this well over a hundred times and it is still on the same stainless steel mesh and it is still going strong. I used to put in the extra effort into taping in a little extra mesh with the directions that go with the chips. Um, I don't think anybody's ever going to use that. So I have since changed the directions that go in with the chips, which if you buy this file pack, it will come with the directions that I used already formatted to be able to print off on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and then cut those out for maximum efficiency so that you can use those to be able to put with your product, as well as it will have the complete updated version of the depths that I used for three quarter inch material. And in my case, I only use white oak for this because if you didn't know, whiskey is aged and stored in white oak barrels. Therefore, it's just another little extra selling feature to this. And I think that it'll hold up a lot longer than any other type of wood. I use maple chips. I used to use white oak chips because I wanted everything to be circled around the white oak theme, but I started using maple chips because they're a lot prettier, they're longer strands. I don't feel like they pack down as much and suffocate the flame as you're trying to burn these. So I now use maple chips for everything. I just, I think it looks a lot better. I used to put these chips into plastic baggies, but I realized at the market that when they're in the sun, they cause a little bit of sweat and condensation on the inside of those plastic baggies. And that could eventually lead to mold, which is not great. So don't put them in little lunch baggies like I used to. I would definitely put them in these little cloth baggies, which you can see here, the um, the string is coming out of the top. I got two different types. Unfortunately, all of the type that I use are at a store currently right now, um, but I will link that down below the actual cloth baggies that I use because the string is just a lot nicer and it doesn't pull out like these do. But I normally have extra of these cloth baggies because people want to buy extra chips and I will sell that for $5 just straight up off the top. So if somebody wants to buy an extra bag of chips with their whiskey smoker that already comes with a bag of chips, it'll be $30. And I would say probably like one in 10 people want extra chips with theirs. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're out there selling these things. Okay, so the torch. Um, I've got a lot to say about this, but this cream brulee torch or whatever you want to call it, is the reason that this works. The flame is so powerful that it is pushing the smoke down through that mesh into the glass and it's causing that cascade effect that you're seeing. So the torch is extremely important. Last week I took this to a pop-up shop and I brought 10 torches with me. Unfortunately, they're about $15 a piece off of Amazon that I was paying for them. I just wanted to have them available for people who might not have a torch at home. I found that that was a huge mistake. 
All of a sudden I'm charging $25 for the actual product and then $20 for the torch. That turns their easy $25 purchase into a difficult $45 per purchase. When it's not there, you think, oh, I've got that at home. When it's there, you think I need to buy both of these things in order to get the entire experience. Now, if you're going to Alibaba and you're white labeling your own torches and you're selling this as a package and you're buying those for $3 a piece, heck yeah, do that. That'll be a good like upsell that you can add to this. But for me, I don't think it's worth it if you're just bringing 10 torches to be able to offer it to people who might not already have them. I personally would just have like a QR code or something like that that took people to the link for Amazon. So in the spring, when I go to that market, I am not gonna be bringing any type of burners. And to top that off, when you're buying them on Amazon, they don't come with butane. So you'll have to open up all those packages and fill them with butane, which means that you cannot return them or you're telling your customer you've got to buy this torch, but also you need to go and buy butane as well, which butane's another $5 on top of that. So instead of spending $25, they're ending up feeling like they need to spend 50 in order to get the whole experience. So my personal opinion is to not sell the burner, don't sell the butane, only sell the whiskey smoker and the chips. Uh, I feel like that just really persuade somebody to make that impulse purchase a lot easier. Okay, so shipping these things, they are extremely small. They can fit in a four by six box. If you get a four by six by two box, you can easily fit in your chips as well as your whiskey smoker. And that is going to cut down a whole lot on shipping. From what I've seen in me shipping them, I've been shipping them from around six to $8, really depending on where they're going. So if you're selling them online, I think you should sell them for around 30 bucks. Uh, I think that's super easy to do. And last but not least, just a, uh, just to show that I'm not full of crap. Uh, here's a guy on Etsy who took some of my files, he created an Etsy right after Make Timber was over, and he started selling them. Last night, I counted, he has sold 85 of these whiskey smokers. He sells them for $30 a piece, and then an upcharge of $5 for somebody to be able to actually customize them. I don't know how many he's customized, so we're only gonna talk about the blank ones themselves. I've shipped these, I know that you can ship them for around $7. So, that's $23. Like we talked about earlier, let's just say it's $6 in material and time and everything that he has in it. So we're down to $17. So if you take that $17 in very simplified profit times the 85 whiskey smokers that he's sold, that is $1,445 in very simplified profit that he's been able to put into his pocket with a very, very cheap file. I think it's super cool that y'all are out there selling this stuff. And to reiterate, like always, if you buy my files, sell as many as you want. And the really cool part of it is his listing is Etsy's pick. You can see that it's like uh, Etsy's little thing talking about like innovative design and like, like pricing and all that kind of stuff. He's got that on his listing with something that he bought as a very, very cheap file. Now you might be wondering, Hamilton, why aren't you out there trying to beat these people? It's because I have a YouTube channel and I'm talking to thousands of people and I'm not going to put in the time and effort to sell things directly online that I know y'all have a lot more time to be able to crush my listings. <laughs> so I would much rather be able to make stuff and create products and sell the files to y'all than pour in a lot of time and effort into something that I know that somebody else can easily do better than me because they have more time than me to do it. Because honestly, I really like running a YouTube channel and I love product design. And we're in a really cool day and age where you can use a CNC machine that really isn't that expensive and create awesome repeatable products to be able to sell. If you go on to CNC later, you can scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can sign up to a newsletter where I'm eventually going to be releasing my course on how to sell things that you make with your CNC. That'll probably be available at the end of summer. I'm working really hard on it. And with my around 10 years of experience, I've got a lot to say. It's going to be a very long in-depth course. So if you're interested in something like that, go ahead and subscribe to my email list on cncalater.com. And I'll have more information about that as it rolls out. And if you've been around the channel for a long time, this is when I talk about how long this actually took me to make this video, this YouTube video in particular. With the filming, with the editing and all of that, that's how long it took. And the reason that I'm doing that is because at the very end of the year, I'll be able to add up all of the hours that I spent filming and editing and then put that against the AdSense that this channel actually brought in and see what I made per hour. So. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button. It helps a ton. If you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did. And until then, see and see y'all later. Bye.